Hello everyone and welcome back to this month's video uh, where we're doing another book review. We're going to be reviewing Roman Holiday, another book from the Ruby series. Uh, I believe it's the third book uh, written by E.C. Myers and the story is by Carrie Shawcross and Eddie Revis. So we're going to be looking into the tales of Roman and Neo. Uh, the book originally came out on September 7th, 2021. I know it's taken me a while to get to this review, but we're gonna get it done, so. Uh, the premise of the book is the story begins with Roman Torchwick, a much younger version than what we see in volumes 1 through 3, and how his kleptomanic nature landed him in Vale, but before that he was part of something much bigger in Mistral. So the book also tells of the sad life story of Nia and how she was able to enhance her abilities to become nimble, how to fight, and how she found Roman. Uh, once again, this is just a condensed review. I'm not going to be going page by page, chapter by chapter. It's just going to be uh, my thoughts about the book, a little bit of the plot line to get context, of course, and then finishing up with my final thoughts and review of the book. So be sure to uh, check out the book, make sure you read it. I found it very easy to read. Uh, once I started, I could not stop, even though I had to because I had to take notes in between so I can do this video. So yes, and also to just spoilers for Ruby episodes, maybe even Ruby Chibi. Let's face it, we've all seen Ruby Chibi a million times. So yes, there will be Ruby spoilers. So let's begin. So we begin actually with Neo and her previous name was Trivia Vanilla. So I'd seen a couple comments about that so I did want to point up that Neo is actually an illusion uh, that Trivia would imagine up. Trivia is the main character. We'll see here in a minute. This is all very confusing but I promise it'll make sense. Uh, so Trivia would kind of imagine Neo and they would play together, they would cause trouble, uh, like pranking and stuff. Um, but Trivia was born mute. She could not speak, but her parents believed that she could talk. Like she just didn't want to talk or didn't want to say anything. So, um, so we have Trivia over in this corner and in the other corner we have a young Roman Torchwick. Uh, and he's already in the stealing business. He's taken like simple things like coats and hats and scarves and whatnot. So, and this is also where we see little Miss Malachite. So she, we later see her in, I believe, Ruby Volume 5. So again, this is why spoilers. Uh, we know that she has the twins and whatnot. We'll get to that here in a second. But, oh, I have Volume 6. Is it Volume 5 or Volume 6? I think it was one of those. Whatever the whole fight scene. Uh, but she is in the book Roman Holiday, which takes years and years before uh, Ruby comes to Vale and that whole story unfolds. So, <clears throat> uh, little Miss Malachite recruits Roman and tries to get him to help her out with some missions that she needs help done. Roman agrees, knowing it is a mistake, but that he could survive uh, to make another one, which I thought was interestingly worded. So, uh, it's going to be going back and forth because that's kind of how the book is. Like, one chapter it's Roman, one chapter it's Neo, so it's going to be a lot of back and forth. Just, just a warning. <laughs> Alright, so Trivia uh, meets some girls. Uh, she leaves the house and she goes with these girls and gets caught shoplifting. So the police catch her and then they figure out whose daughter she is, that she's the daughter of like some esteemed, uh, I believe her father was like a toy maker or something, but they're just like, oh crap, she's his daughter and hopefully we don't get too much in trouble. So, and not only that, we hear one of the police officers tell the other one uh, he actually called the other one a dum-dum, which is something that we see in Ruby Chibi when Neo holds the sign <clears throat> and says, like, you know, he's a dum-dum, but he's my dum-dum, talking about Roman Torchwick during one of the episodes. So 
Uh, so the police officers take a little trivia back to her place where there's actually a party going on. Uh, her family, or excuse me, really her parents, she's an only child, her parents are hosting like a party and whatnot, but they didn't realize like she was missing. Like they just kind of like put her in her room, like, you know, we don't want to hear from you. That's a joke, obviously, because she's mute. Uh, we don't want to see you. <clears throat> We're going to be attending to this. So that's why Trivia snuck out. She's just like, well, whatever. I'm just going to go do my own thing. Very, very Neo-like attitude. Um, so Trivia then decides to use her semblance. So once again, Ruby semblances are kind of these, uh, <clears throat> not really superhero powers, but it's, it's a manifestation. No, wait, that's Aura. I'm getting them mixed up. But you know, she uses her semblance, which creates illusions and causes quite a ruckus at the party. So she's able to unlock her semblance at an early age, and then she uses that at the party. But what's interesting is she uh, uses a semblance of like a little mouse. And um, we see the little in the volume nine, like trailer and sneak peek. So I'm kind of wondering if there's a tie there, if it's just coincidence, if Rooster T likes mice. I mean, I like mice, it's in my username, so. But for a different reason, which we'll talk about later. <laughs> uh, Trivia realizes the ca trouble she's caused, but she can't blame Neo, who led her to do these things, such as like the fighting, <clears throat> the shoplifting, and the party trouble. She tries to pinpoint it on Neo, she's like texting to her parents, or not texting, but like using her phone uh, like, the phone notes and stuff to be like, you know, hey, this is what's really going on. Our parents are like, no, we don't want you to type. We want you to talk to us. We want you to speak it out. So, there was that going on. Okay, so now we have the Malachite twins. <clears throat> uh, they make an appearance and are with Roman Torchwick, and they're trying to make plans, but they're mostly trying to distract him, so they're just causing trouble such as like, you know, like touching his hat. He had his hat back then and whatnot. So we were talking about dust, which is a way to uh, enhance one's weapons and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> there is some trouble that they get into. Um, and the mother says like, you know, the, you're not allowed to watch them again. So uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a kerfuffle, you know, the mother miss, <clears throat> little Miss Malachi comes in and she's just like, uh, no, you're not watching my kids again. And he's just like, you know, the last thing I want to do is be responsible for some kid. And then it cuts into Neo's chapter. So it's kind of like, mm. especially if you watch the later episodes, like, yeah, you're, you're in for a surprise. <laughs> so in Trivia's chapter, we see that she likes gymnastics. She rather do gymnastics than study and whatnot, uh, which she has a private tutor to help her at home. Uh, she then decides to like slip like a little sleeping potion into the teacher's tea and the teacher is out, she's asleep, and she uses her semblance uh, to kind of disguise herself as like her, as the tutor, but then as she's like leaving the house because she doesn't want to stay in the house and study, you know, she comes across her father and her father's like, oh, the, you know, is everything okay? You know, you're leaving early, but then he just lets her go, so... So Neo sets out for the day, a day on the town. Uh, she once again shoplift, uh, but she forgot to remove the security tags from the clothes. She comes back home, this time disguising as her mother. <clears throat> and at first her father buys into it. He's like, oh yeah, like, how was your day? What all did you get into? And stuff. But then he's like, you know, I, I, I know your trivia because one eye is brown and the other is pink. And so... That just meant that Trivia overused her semblance and was tired to the point that, like, her semblance was just, like, missing bits and pieces. <clears throat> and then, uh, so her father gets upset and angry, and then, uh, apparently Neo shoplifted a parasol, and, uh, she attacks her father with the parasol that she really wanted. So he's just like, it's just an umbrella, like, get over it, but... To Neo, it's gonna become a part of her, a bigger part of her, so. Now, we're back to Roman, <clears throat> who visits, I believe it's Bisk. Uh, and they're trying to take care of a job for a little Miss Malachite. So they're trying to get <clears throat> the money that Bisk owes 
but in order to do that, like, they're making threats against him and whatnot, so. Uh, so then we have another new character come in named Cammy, and I was trying to wonder, like, you know, it's kind of like Chameleon, which I believe is, like, her semblance and whatnot, and then uh, I wondered if, like, maybe they were, <clears throat> if they were related to Ilya in some way, so. Yes, yeah, so Cammy comes into the picture, uh, she's, like, fighting Roman. She's like trying to be like, oh, it's just a joke. You know, we sparred in the past and all this stuff. I'm just trying to, <clears throat> you know, spar with you, practice. You know, Roman's deflecting attacks because he knows how she attacks, but he's like, there's something else going on here. So <clears throat> eventually he figures it out. And then towards the end of that chapter, that's when he comes up with the motto, you know, lie, cheat, and survive, which is something that he tells Ruby in at the end of volume three, whenever you know, he, before he meets his fate, we'll put it that way. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of his motto is to lie, cheat, and survive. And that he would be running the show in less than a year. So we'll figure that out once we figure out what's going on with Trivia, who once again, Neo has made an appearance. Uh, so Neo tricks Trivia into starting a fire and soon her whole house just burns to the ground. She also uses the parasol to glide to safety, so she managed to get the parasol back from her father. And then she, like, glides her way back down <clears throat> onto the ground, away from the fire in the burning house. And that's the first time that she does it. And she makes the comparison, I hope I say this name right, kind of like, it's like either Alex or Alex or something like that, falling through the world. So as we all know, Ruby is based on fairy tales. But not only that, in Ruby, there is also other fairy tales that take place that kind of help with that world building and whatnot. So I thought that was interesting. You know, I made the comparison, you know, Alice in Wonderland, which is something that I love and enjoy. Uh, we get a little bit of mention about the girl who fell through the world. We never get her name. Uh, but, you know, Oscar Pines talks that out with Ozpin in his mind in volume eight. But then in volume nine, you know, after everybody falls through and whatnot, and they're on that strange island. I've been wondering if that's an Alice in Wonderland theme. Hoping by the time this video posts, we get a little bit more updates, so we shall see. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So, Ni- or excuse me. This is gonna get confusing, I know. <laughs> so Trivia uses her semblance to keep Neo activated, but it's draining because aura is only at like a certain limit and the more you use, the more tired you get and whatnot. Uh, Trivia looks at the house, sees the fire, thinks it's all pretty and beautiful. <clears throat> uh, she thinks the brothers, I think they're talking about the gods. Neo then integrates herself into Trivia. Father gets mad and hits Trivia, leaving her stunned, so. Yeah, so Neo starts to become trivia, like, into this person. It's no longer an illusion, it's starting, like, she's starting to integrate into trivia, so, and that makes the father upset. He's just like, I just want a daughter that I can talk to, literally, and communicate with, not this other person who's burning down my house or encouraging my daughter to burn down my house, so there's a lot that goes on in that chapter. But before we can figure out what happens to Trivia and where her family ends up, we have Roman. Uh, what's interesting is Roman does not want to become a huntsman, which seems to be, you know, the whole premise of Ruby is to become a huntress or huntsman, get your license and all this stuff. Roman's just like, I'm good. I'll pass. No thanks. I only want to see that in my nightmares. So that's when he gets the crazy idea to go rob a bank in Vale. PG. So he's no longer a mistral. He manages to go to Vale. <clears throat> uh, so he's, you know, walking around Vale. He's like in the comparison, you know, one is open and bright. The other is like kind of hidden away and in secret. So, so mistral is very secret keeping. We see that a little bit in volume five. Or maybe that one's volume five. Oh gosh. <laughs> I did a review with Demon Interviews and I totally forgot. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I don't think we see Little Miss Malkite until volume six. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so he likes Fail because it's open, it's bright. Um <clears throat> and I think also too, when I when I went back and reread this, I think the real reason why 
veil got attacked first is because how open it is. It's not like secrecy, like Mistral. It's not protected by a fleet of, uh, you know, airships like Atlas or, you know, the desert in Vacuo. Veil is just like, we're open, all are welcome. And then that's when the attack happened in volume three. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, he talks to Fred, uh, a bank worker. So we're going back to Roman, what he's up to, which is a heist. Um, so <clears throat> he talks to Fred, you know, the employee and stuff. He's like, I'm going to rob the bank and, you know, causes a holdup and stuff like that. So, and it's so funny because during that time, when I was reading this book during the summertime, as I'm like reading this scene, uh, I started hearing like sirens going outside my house because we we're pretty close to like the main road. And there's like a police station not too far. And all of a sudden I started hearing sirens and I'm like, oh, they're coming for you, Roman. <laughs> Oh, goodness. But yes, so during that whole part, uh, there enters a huntsman and a huntress. They're going to stop Roman from robbing the bank, uh, but it doesn't go as planned. Roman kind of outsmarts them. He gets away. And later on, you know, as he's, you know, feasting and stuff, he's the money to buy good food and whatnot. He's listening to the news on television uh, say how he robbed the bank, knowing that now he is in the city of Vale and the two huntsmen got fired because they didn't do their job correctly or professionally enough. This is where we see Professor Ozpin step in. So at this point in, you know, the Ruby timeline, Professor Ozpin is there. He makes an appearance and instead of just being like, you know, give us back our money and stuff, he's like, oh, well, welcome to Vale and we'll be on the lookout for you and all this stuff. So I was like, oh, Ozpin got really serious in that moment. So <laughs> it happens. <clears throat> All right, so now back to Trivia. Uh, trivia is sent to a girls' boarding school, which is the same one that the uh, Malachite twins go to. So the mother, I noticed, is, like, emotionally detached. She's like, you know, I'm just, like, don't want to be anywhere near you, don't know how I feel about you and whatnot. And we have another new character named Lady Beatrix Browning. I had to look at it. Lady Beatrix Browning. So, and at that point, I think it finally hits the mother and then the mother becomes tearful, you know, as trivia is being led to like the school and stuff. So it was pretty, pretty hard to read. <clears throat> that is a very short chapter because now we're back to good old Roman. Uh, Roman gets into an unmarked police car. So I guess those exist in Ruby as well. So always interesting. Uh, which confuses the officers because, you know, they're kind of on the lookout for him. I mean, he robbed a bank, you know, he's been doing some some shady stuff. So the officers are like, well, what are you doing in our car? Like, this is the, the opposite of what you want to do. So, but he gives them donuts in order to gain a ride to their boss. So, which is, oh, I'm going to say this wrong. <laughs> uh, hi, Jean. Jean. I try not to say Jean. Because that's Yang, Yang Zhao Long. So this is like X I O N G. So he's kind of the uh, head boss mafia, I guess, of Vale, or, you know, little Miss Malkite is with Mistral. Put it that way. All right, so <clears throat> Roman said to him, uh, Hi, eats oatmeal, Sir Talk, talking about Roman joining uh, his team. Or not really team. This is so much the Ruby fandom. It's not really his team, but just kind of like his little circle, I guess. I don't know. I'm running out of words. Uh, if he wants to help uh, Roman and Vale, since Vale is highest territory. I had Robin. Robin is an Alice, I feel like at this point. <clears throat> uh, Roman then says he used to work for Little Miss, little miss and tells her to tell and tells him to tell her that Vale is now his to run and that she cannot keep her webs to expand in Vale like she did in Mistral. So during volume six, we hear her say, you know, you know what I like about spiders and, you know, they have like the spider tattoos and whatnot. So, <clears throat> so he's kind of like, you know what, I'm done following her rules in Mistral. I'm going to come to Vale. I'm going to make Vale mine. So he goes to the big boss and he's just like, you know what, I'm going to make this mine. You tell her she's not going to get an inch of this land or whatever. Like, this is this is my area. So, 
So yes, so <clears throat> Roman did have the spider tattoo, but then he transforms it into the pumpkin, which is his emblem. So now we're back to trivia, and there's quite a lot to dissect here. So trivia is now at the boarding school, and is listening to others and kind of learning their secrets. Because she can't talk, she is mute, born mute. She decides to, you know, use her listening ears, I guess you could say, and just learns about people that way. So, and then she kind of lets, like, others speculate, like, her tale and stuff. So, uh, Trivia shows off her nimbleness in class and actually enjoys fashion and sewing, something that comes in handy when her school uniform is in threads. And instead of asking for a new one, she kind of creates one. So, it made me think of the Cruella de Vil scene wherever she's trying to start, like, new fashion trends and all this stuff. So... You know, it's very fashionable, which I can relate to. <laughs> uh, trivia uses a phone app that speaks in a robot voice, so kind of like one of those automatic voice messages and whatnot, and it's something that she doesn't like uh, because she thinks her voice sounds a little bit more feminine and, you know, a little bit more girly rather than Mr. Roboto. So it kind of reminded me of an artist, uh, Alien Avian. <clears throat> And kind of like how her voice might sound and like Fox can hear her voice inside her thoughts and stuff. It kind of made me think of that a little bit. So, <clears throat> uh, let's see. So she disguises as a literally shopkeep, which I was like, old man shopkeep? Like he's around too? I mean, I feel like he's always going to be around. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he was like around since the beginning of this of the story. So, but she disguises herself. Uh, because she needs to follow the twins because the twins leave the school grounds and she's kind of like, well, I want to figure out what's going on without getting caught. So she decides to follow the twins. But before that, we go back to Roman. Lots of little cliffhangers, but that's what Ruby is known for. Good old fashioned cliffhangers. Um, <clears throat> Roman meets with Honey, a restaurant owner. Uh, so her skin has dust like dust crystals inside not like hazel like when hazel like jams it now that i think about it i was thinking more of uh you know in um after the fall before the dawn where rumple had like the dust on her clothes and stuff that's kind of what i think of as like this sparkly dust on her skin uh and then this is where the twins come in actually the twins come in and they try to fight him and so so Roman and the twins are fighting, and meanwhile, uh, at this point he meets Trivia. Trivia is just like, well, who is he? Why are the twins fighting him and stuff? Realizes that, you know, it's two against one and whatnot. So then Trivia is like, all right, I'm going to help this guy out. So she saves him with uh, her semblance. He feels irritated that he was saved, but that he would then try to find her again. <clears throat> So Trivia goes to class and finds out that her hair is the half brown, half pink. Uh, she then uses her scroll to look up Roman Torchwick, who he was, what he was doing in Vale. Uh, Lady Beatrice has uh, Trivia stay after class, and Trivia learns that Lady uh, Lady Beatrice trains uh, girls to fight, and not just to be ladies. So it's kind of like this, the academy that uh, Trivia is in is like very... Uh, prestigious, like we're gonna turn girls into young ladies, but at the same time she's like, well I kind of have a little secret and that's we train them to fight and use their semblances and whatnot. So, and then Trivia agrees because she thinks that would help her find Roman and help Roman with whatever goals that he has. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So we talk, so the book starts to talk about like this balance that Trivia has with balancing her parents, Lady Beatrice, and her own expectations. So there's a lot going on in Neo's or in Trivia's life. So she learns Neo is a part of her almost as she is a part of Neo. So it's kind of like the integration is like really starting to come together. Like Trivia can't really hold it back anymore. She's like, I am Neo, Neo is me, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Uh, so Roman meets her in a shopping center, and they introduce one another, and Trio gives uh, Neapolitan's name for the first time, feeling like herself for the first time. So this is really, um, like, Neo starting to come to light. Uh, <clears throat> oh yes, and during this time, 
Neo turns into Roman, so Neo uses her semblance to then create the illusion that she looks like Roman Torchwick, which is something that I hope um, happens in Ruby Volume 9. I'm hoping that Ruby and Neo have like a confrontation. Ruby's like, why are you after me? Like, I didn't do anything to you. And then Rome, and then, nope, Neo turns into Roman. So we can kind of see it in the new animation style. So she did do it once. I'm hoping she'll do it again. Yeah, so we find out that Roman doesn't have a semblance, which is kind of interesting. So yeah. <laughs> I feel like in Ice Queendom, whenever the the sub version with the Japanese raise like a semblance and stuff like that. And I remember like talking it out again with demon interviews and like it sounded like it was like revered and respected when really it's just like it's a thing. Um, maybe it's because, you know, he doesn't have one. So maybe that's why he's like, oh a semblance, like how come they get one and I didn't get one? So I don't know. Would be interesting. <clears throat> Alright. So trivia, now Neo is taking fighting and defense classes, learning just how to be nimble and quick. She is, so she's learning quite a bit about herself. Uh, and I feel like most of the moves that she learned in the academy, we see these in volume two during the train fight scene with Yang and Neo, <clears throat> that a lot of the moves being used was in the academy. I mean, I can't confirm or deny that, but that's what I'm thinking is just that kind of thing, so. Uh, we also get a very curious line, uh, again, spoilers, because it's going to involve Ruby Vine 8. I have to quote this because I can't say it any other way. So, Grim, who can learn and adapt to fight humans and Faunus better. Um, and, of course, if we were this years ago, I'd be like, yeah, Grim are just kind of there to fight and... You know, when there's less hope and there's despair and grief, that's when the Grimm come and whatnot. But, yeah, after Volume 8, seeing the Grimm with the silver eyes, um, kind of that human physique and whatnot, uh, it's not just, like, clon streak, but they kind of learn. And they kind of, like, evolve, in a sense, too. So not only are the characters evolving and evolving, evolving their semblances, but the Grim are also evolving and they're figuring out how do we attack, how do we, how do we get better and stronger. And this is something else that Ublex says in Volume 2, that the Grim just kind of wait, they learn, and whatnot. Um, yeah, so it's not just like, the Grim are just there to be like, la la la, okay, attack whenever. Like, they're, they're fighting for something. I mean, we all know why, Salem, but yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna do a whole separate video of that. Maybe after volume 9, because I feel like hopefully more gets revealed. I feel like a lot, side note, I feel like a lot gets revealed more in the books, and then as you go back and rewatch the show, it's kind of like things start to click and make sense. That's why I always say, do your homework. But yeah, it is interesting to see that, you know, as like, you know, volume 8, it's like, oh, well, the Grim learn and they fight, and it's like, well, it seems kind of silly, but then you go and you watch it and you're like, yeah, they're trying to fight something. It's just, it makes me anticipate, like, what's going to happen in later volumes, and if there's going to be books, like, what more will be brought to the table, so, excited, not excited, like, ah, <laughs> welcome to the Ruby fandom. So, but yeah, all right, side note done, back to the actual book and all its goodness, so, we have Neo comes to Roman's uh, apartment disguised as Little Miss, which is interesting. She must have looked up a picture of, like, Little Miss Malkite online, or maybe Roman described her. Because I don't think she'll know her until, like, later on, so we'll see. But he recognizes her right away. He's like, yeah, you're Neo, you're not Little Miss Malkite. And she's like, darn. <laughs> you got me. He also finds out uh, she used a feather tracking device in his cap to find his location. So he's already wearing his cap, uh, the lovely Fendora. He has like a feather in it. And he has been tracking his whole uh, uh, location this whole time. Neo shows off the parasol and how she wants a hidden blade and names the parasol Hush. So this is when her weapon comes in. She's already involving her semblance. She's learning how to fight, how to defend herself. So <clears throat> I feel like this book is definitely a lot about Neo growing, hence why it's all about Roman and Neo, but yeah. But at this point, they're like, well, we need a plan. We need to figure out what we're gonna steal. And at first Neo says dust, like let's get some large quantities of dust. 
much like volume one where Roman's robbing dust shops and the whole airship with dust and whatnot. But he's like, no, let's do something a little smaller and let's do coffee. Yay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so in chapter 17 uh, is the first time the pair sets out on their heist. Uh, their first step, it's really cute how the chapter is just like step one, step two. So the first step is to find the place and they decide to go by the docks and they're going to get the coffee. It's called Magic Beans, which kind of, now that I think about it, is kind of like Jack and the Beanstalk, uh, the magic beans that Jack used to grow. But this time it's coffee. And it is interesting because Rooster Teeth came out with a coffee brand several years ago. Uh, in volume eight, it's also there with the uh, cinders. Like backstory, you can see like the coffee that Rooster Teeth made on the shelves. I don't have it anymore. I did have a pack, it's gone. <laughs> Cause I really like coffee. <laughs> but yeah, it made me think of that too. I was like, hey, they did something with coffee. <laughs> Alright, step two. In intrusion, where they go into the coffee warehouse. So they're like, alright, this is our plan. Now we're gonna go in and we're going to get the coffee. Step three is the getaway. And of course, Neo is the getaway driver. Just like in volume three with the air ambulance ship. And then step four, they can now profit and sell the coffee at a higher rate. So you're trying to get that that money by stealing it. We're stealing the goods to get the money. I guess that's how it works. I'm obviously not into this kind of stuff, but it is interesting to learn. <clears throat> okay, so later on, we just, well actually Neo is the one to discover that Lady Beatrice uses uh the pins to track the girl's location so they have like these little pins and not only can neo detect like roman's whereabouts but she's been the one being tracked on like the girl's location so lady <clears throat> beatrice is also in connection with little miss malachite so this is really where things start to pick up in the book <laughs> when, when neo starts to discover like wait you've been tracking us you're in connection with little miss malachite and now thanks to neo always visiting Roman, and especially with the heist and whatnot, they know where Roman is. So Nia tells Roman to stay put and goes after him, not wanting her friend to disappear. Uh, but before Neo can get there, uh, you know, there's a knock at Roman's door, he goes to answer it. It's little Miss Malachite in the flesh, but he's like, nope, it's Neo, you're pulling the same trick twice, it's not gonna work, but then she comes through the door and she's like, no, it's really me, I don't know who Neo is. So little Miss Malachite captures Roman and says he's going back to Mistral with her. Roman realizes Honey also told uh, little Miss Malachite about Roman's location too. So there's a lot going on, there's a lot of backstabbing and like, oh, she told me this, she told me that, and stuff like that, so... And not only that, uh, Honey uses her uh, semblance, which is like a singing. You couldn't find it, but I do have a note saying like Honey has like a singing semblance, which is similar to an original character in Ruby that I really want to write maybe one day. We'll see, but I was like, hey, I want a semblance like that too. <laughs> uh, discussion for another time. So, uh, so at this point, Neo goes in, finds a high. Sorry, Oliver's here. He likes the story time. Uh, so she finds him and recognizes him from her parents' party, the one that the police officers came and realized like he was there. She recognized him. So, and he realized that he knew her because he used to give her like fairy tale books as like a gift when she was a lot younger and whatnot. And she's like, oh yeah, I really like the one about, you know, the girl in the tower, which we later learn is Salem in the Tower in Volume 6 and in the Ruby uh, fairy tale short as well. So <clears throat> Neo tells them about the pins and manages to stop High to to take the helicopter to find Roman. So <clears throat> so Neo is like, oh, he's friend, he's friendly, we have a connection, whatnot. But then realizes like, oh, this isn't gonna go well. I'm gonna need your helicopter to go after and find Roman. So during that whole scene, Neo uh, rescues Roman from the convoy, and they need a plan to get out of the city away from High and Little Miss. So they're on the run now. <clears throat> so Neo, who apparently knows how to fly airships, helicopters, and whatnot, not sure if that's part of the training program or not, if so, hook a girl up, 
uh, Neo flies to her former house and Roman is stunned. And this kind of reminded me of um, Ruby Volume 4 whenever Blake and Sun make it to Mar Menagerie. And Sun's like, you know, which one's your house? And Blake's like, the big one in the middle. And Sun's just like, eh. It's kind of what I thought of, but with Roman and Neo. So, <laughs> uh, the parents come out mad about where the helicopter is parked at. Um, she didn't park it in the most dignified way. I guess they don't teach that in a airship 101 flying class. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Neo tells Roman he is the toughest crime ba boss as he and he says like he'll remember that and like praises her and stuff so uh so yeah so <clears throat> before they get into the house and introduce like neo and roman have a moment and they're just she's just like you know hey like you know you got this you're the toughest crime boss i know roman's like oh that's sweet like you know i'll remember that and you know, he's like you know you're a good person you know thanks for sticking by me and all this so neo gets emotional and hugs him and whatnot and he tries to shake her off like oh like you're gonna get my suit all wrinkly and all this stuff so we start to see the signs of their friendship um i don't want to say friendship not relationship but their friendship start to bloom and uh in the way that she wanted to protect him that now she was starting to develop this emotional connection with him as well so by then uh, her parents come over they're like the helicopter we don't like it there but it'll do for now they get introduced to one another and Roman and Neo chat in the house. The father brings tea, which is a uh, drug. <laughs> so they all slip off. Well, the two of them slip off to a nice sleep. So, um, so when Neo wakes up, she finds out that her parents owed a debt, and her father needed like this hard drive. Neo is placed in her former bedroom, and the father takes off. So this is where it's gonna get really, really crazy. <laughs> So Neo sees that Little Miss and High Forces are fighting outside the home. Uh, so at that point, you know, everybody's at the Neapolitan uh, household, I guess Vanilla household, because that was uh, Neo's former last name. So at this point, everybody's fighting over a flash drive, which apparently is very important information. So you have Little Miss Malachite High, you have uh, Trivia's father, and I'm guessing he has forces too, so they're fighting outside. Roman and Neo are at the computer trying to figure out like what is on here and whatnot. Um, she remembers her father said something about um, like blowing up the house at night, finds out he has a bunch of fire dust crystals, and decides to take matters into her own hands. So she lights an illusion matchstick, locks the door, since her father is the only one who can like open it. So Roman calls Lisa Lavender, as we all know, uh, Remnant's finest news anchor with a hot scoop about Little Miss spying on people and fail with the pins. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so once again, house is on fire, there's fighting going on outside. Um, Neo creates an illusion of her and Roman in the bullhead, so that's the helicopter, and but they actually like escape in a car. So everybody's like trying to go after Neo and Roman in the helicopter, but they're over here driving away like, ha ha ha, we're free. So Malachite opens fire on the window of the bullhead, and after that fails to uh, penetrate the window's hard light shield. So remember, hard light is another form of dust. We see that in Ruby Volume 6 with the machine that, uh, Cord Cordelia? No. Uh-oh, forgot her name. You know her name. You know who I'm talking about. <clears throat> uh, launches a missile straight into the room, and the stockpile of very explosive dust it contained just send a shockwave out of the house instantly and throws the bullhead into the tree line on the opposite side of the driveway and launches the car Roman and Neo are taking shelter in. So a lot of explosions would be interesting to see animated. It would be chaos because that's how it felt reading this and then trying to type notes for it was just like trying to figure it out. So I do feel like and I'll explain here, mine a minute, I do feel like towards the end of each Ruby novel, there's just like this gigantic fight scene, and then it's all at once. <laughs> all right. Uh, but then towards the end, we have Neo's father is now uh, deceased by Neo's hand. Roman and Neo escape together. Um, and they decide, you know, where they want to go and whatnot. 
uh, Neo kisses Roman's cheek. Once again, not a relationship, I think just a sign of friendship and glad that he was alive after all that happened. And they then set out into the world of Remnant, ready for more crimes and action. So that wraps up our little tale of Roman and Neo and all they had to endure to get to the point of going back to Vale, uh, creating heist, stealing the dust. I guess Roman took her advice in doing that a bit. Yes, so that is Roman Holiday, kind of sort of in a nutshell. Uh, <clears throat> so overall thoughts about the book. Um, at first, I thought Neo was kind of like Tinkerbell and Trivia was like Pan, in a sense. Like a little bit of Peter Pan action there, just like Neo was kind of like Tinkerbell, like always by Pan and stuff, like do this, do that, and whatnot. Um, I did think Roman at the beginning of the book was just like, you know, making threats, like, you know, I'm gonna hurt you and stuff like this, but he never really did. He was just like trying to like build them stuff up in that way. I've always wondered, you know, especially I think in volume two, whenever we see Neo do like the illusion uh, to protect Roman and stuff, I've always wondered how they found each other and <clears throat> um, we do find out why, you know, it was through the fight and her getting sent to boarding school, which if it wouldn't happen, like, would they have been another way? I don't know. But not only that, um, I've always wondered how Neo always comes quickly to Roman's aid. And I think it's because of the feather in his hat. I have to go back and look in volume three. So I don't think it's there. But I wonder if she's like always kept that tracking device so that she can always like find out where he is and like like go to him to help protect him. <clears throat> um, and not only that, this the book. Not only that, but uh, I did get closer to the two characters. Um, I didn't really care for them much in the beginning. Um, but yeah, towards the end of the book, I was like, okay, like, I can appreciate what they've gone through, you know, how it kind of helped build up for, like, later seasons. And not only that, uh, reinforced my hope that Neo will transform into Roman so we can see him in the new art design, and that uh, maybe she'll settle her score against Roman passing away. So, yeah, I thought it was a very interesting read, uh, very adventurous. Again, those cliffhangers, but then it would go to like, like the next characters. So then you'd have to read through that to get to the next. So there was a lot of a lot of back and forth, but that is okay. Once again, like I explained a little bit ago, uh, you know, it's kind of like you know that slow character development um, <clears throat> that each book does. You know, after the fall, before the dawn, and whatnot, and then towards the end, like that's where all the action is. That's where you really gotta read it carefully or else you miss it and then like everybody's like standing up at the end like oh that, that was taken care of and you're like what what's going on <laughs> so yeah there was <clears throat> definitely a lot of that towards the end so but it's not not bad at all i enjoyed it like i said before i got a little bit closer-ish to roman and neo i feel like i did identify with neo you know being alone the fashionista that is so me um you know, just like wanting somebody, like a friend, to talk to, protect. Maybe not go on heist. Try to keep things legal on here. But yeah. And then too, like Roman just, you know, he, he had to build himself up. You know, he created the motto and he stuck to it to the very end. So yeah. So that is it for Ruby Roman Holiday. So let me know what y'all thought about my review. I don't think there's another book. Of course, Right as I post this watch, there'll be like an announcement. New Ruby novel coming out. Mm. <laughs> it'll be all over it. But yeah, um, I thought it was very interesting, very well done. So, you know, let me know if you've read it. Let me know what your favorite parts are. Let me know who, which one's your favorite, Roman or Neo, or maybe both. Uh, but until then, I hope you all take care, stay safe, <clears throat> take your meds, drink some water, some tea, check out Cosplay Tea Time. Uh, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, peace, love, kindness. Bye!